Today we're gonna make a pizza frittata in the air fryer. So you guys may have saw me using parchment paper last time, but this time we're just gonna use a baking dish. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna spray some avocado oil in here. If you guys are a beginner to keto, this spray at Costco is a game changer. They also have avocado oil spray pretty much anywhere else though. What's up, Dora? What's up, Maverick? So I'm spraying pretty heavily. Now we're just gonna start cracking eggs. Good to see you, B Nick. What's up, Vanessa? And we're doing six eggs. You could use a bigger or smaller container depending on if you wanna make like a meal for yourself, if you want a meal prep for your family and uh, you would just adjust the cooking time. And I mean, you can bake this too. So most people aren't gonna be able to fit this in their air fryer. We just have like the oven style one. So you can totally bake it at 350 for just a little longer. What's good, Cindy? Hey. hey. All right, I've got the eggs in here. Now what we're gonna do is dollop some Rayo's marijuana sauce on here. I just need like a spoon. Normally I would just like go for the vibe and drizzle it, but I don't know how, I don't know if this is gonna work. This is like my first time ever making this. So I feel like it needs something green, but I don't have any green peppers. However, I do have like green onions and spinach, but I don't know if spinach goes with like a traditional pizza. Before we start adding everything else, what do you guys think? This is gonna have like pepperoni, mozzarella, do you think I should put some spinach in here too? Yay or nay? All right, we're gonna season it, just a little garlic powder, a little bit of oregano. Do you have any future plans to show cooking a ribeye and seasonings? Uh, I've done a video for a ribeye, I think, but uh, you guys are saying yes, okay. I haven't saw one nay, so I think we're gonna go for it. But, so when I do ribeye, it's literally just salt and pepper. You don't need a lot of seasonings. All right, everyone's saying yes on the spinach. So we're gonna add a little bit of spinach too. And then just some salt. So you do the ribeye with just salt and pepper. And if you have access to a grill, that's my favorite way to cook a ribeye. But guys, this is, oh, spinach will add moisture, but you're the only no, so I'm gonna have to go with the popular vote and add some spinach. So usually when I buy spinach, it goes bad, like quick. This has not went bad yet, although some of it is like a little questionable, so I'm gonna be selective. I'm not adding a ton, like I said, I really just want it in here for the color. By the way, Burn, I'm sorry that last night I didn't post the recipe in the caption like I said I would. Uh, send me a DM and I'll text it to you or I'll go edit the caption. But I made a reel for that zucchini. There we go, just a little bit of spinach. So we did the zucchini buffalo chicken bites on the live last night and I made a reel for it today. If you put spinach in a Ziploc with a paper towel and get all the air out, it will last longer. Oh, interesting. All right, now we're gonna add some mozzarella. Some pepperoni. Have you tried overnight oats? So Anna has a recipe for that on her page, right? Yeah, we have keto overnight oats that Anna has the recipe for on her page. Good evening, Chrissy. Spinach lasts longer if you leave the bag open. Oh, that's interesting too. All right, we're just getting these peps on here. And pepperonis do shrink. So whenever you make like keto pizzas, I try to add make it to where they overlap a little because they're gonna shrink. A 
All right. Can you read the ingredients on the pepperoni? Yes, so if you guys are wondering, I talk about this when you're buying keto sweeteners or desserts. You could totally make this without meat, Pammy. Just skip the pepperoni, it would be so good. Add more veggies, like black olives would be great. Um, okay, so this is like our pizza frittata. We're gonna put it in the air fryer. I'm gonna sprinkle a little more cheese on top. Here we go. All right, now we have about 15 minutes to just hang out, I'll answer some questions. If anyone's getting started on their keto journey, this is the place to get informed. You guys are saying even more cheese than what I added. I don't want it to be too cheesy. I'm gonna throw these away. Our trash can is like filled to the brim, so. Those are definitely gonna spill over, but it's okay. I did the pizza today. Hey, Gina, what did you think? So on the topic of pizza, we posted a pizza recipe yesterday using chicken, canned chicken for the crust, and that's a super good recipe as well. Can you review the ingredients? Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Um, all right. So I bought some pepperoni. It was delicious, like 10 out of 10. I feel, I feel like it tasted like an actual crust. Yeah, so Anna loves the chicken crust. She says it tasted like an actual crust to her. I think it's one of the best keto recipes, especially if you're just looking for something quick and simple. All right, so the ingredients in the pepperoni. 98% of what's inside these pepperonis. So the vast majority of the pepperonis are just pork, beef, and salt. And then 2% of everything else is dextrose, spices, old deserin of paprika, sodium erythorbate, flavorings, lactic acid, starter culture, and sodium nitrate. So. 2% of the ingredients in the pepperonis I'm eating are weird, hard to pronounce, not good. But the reason I don't care that much is because, for one, I'm not eating bags of this every day. And if I'm consuming like two or three grams of weird ingredients on a daily basis compared to the thousands of grams of everything else, I just don't see that as an issue. But if the only thing you're eating is like processed food all day, then you may wanna reconsider your approach. But to me, these pepperonis are part of a recipe that's 90% real food. So I'm not worried about it. Oh yeah, so Anna likes turkey pepperoni, so we'll see the ingredients on those. It's gonna be the exact same ingredients. It's just gonna be turkey instead of pork. Yeah, it's like literally the exact same ingredients for turkey pepperoni, except turkey instead of beef and pork. I've been sent ads about a new form of keto. Do you know anything about that? I think that's clickbait. Yeah, a lot of that stuff is clickbait. So Tammy, this is what I was talking about earlier. Dextrose, maltodextrin, and maltitol those are three things that do throw you out of ketosis. But in savory foods like pepperoni or bacon, it's just being used as like a preservative. They're not using it to make it taste sweet. Whenever they use it with a sweetener, like if you buy a big bag of stevia, it's but you check the ingredients and the first ingredient is dextrose, they're just using that to like bulk up the stevia so you can use it as like a one-to-one -one replacement for sugar. That is bad. But if it's pepperoni, 
and it's less than 2% of it is dextrose, they're not using nearly enough to affect ketosis or raise your blood sugar for that matter. Even if you had like 100 servings of these pepperonis, you're consuming them with so much fat and protein, your blood sugar, you're not gonna have a huge blood sugar spike. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm glad that cleared it up for you. So just when you're buying desserts and uh, things like that, you should worry about dextrose and maltodextrin. Okay, so here's a quick review of everything we put in the recipe. So we put, we sprayed avocado oil in a dish and then we added seasonings. So salt, pepper, garlic powder, oregano. And then we put spinach on top. And then on top of that, we put some mozzarella. And then we put pepperoni. And then I sprinkled a little more cheese. So very simple. And I may have forgotten the eggs. What keto bread do you suggest? Aura wheat is pretty good. There are a lot out there. So just go with the one you find that tastes the best. I forgot to add the six eggs. Yes, so that's first. And just, just know when you're buying keto breads and tortillas and sweeteners and stuff, listen to your body. How do you feel? If you are testing your ketones, what are your ketone levels? Like all of that stuff is something to consider when buying new keto products other than just like real food at the grocery. I'm pre-diabetic. Is keto safe to try? I, I've left the fridge open. I have to shut it. Hold on. Oh, and by the way, all right. If you're pre-diabetic, a lot of people have reversed type two diabetes and have stopped diabetes in its tracks because they're pre-diabetic and they did keto. So keto should be great for you, but I'm not a doctor. So talk to your doctor first. Is Ezekiel bread keto friendly? I don't think so. I think it's pretty high in carbs. Best meats and cheeses for charcuterie boards. We actually had a really good charcuterie board. Any, I don't know like the names of these products that are on charcuterie boards, but like specifically, but like, what do I like? Salami, pepperoni, uh, like cheddar, Swiss, Gouda, provolone. I don't know. Like I can't off the top, like beef jerky, beef sticks. I can't off the top of my head name what would go on a charcuterie board. I just go buy a bunch of deli meat and sliced cheese that I think looks good. And that's what goes on my charcuterie board. So the chicken crust, one can of chicken, an egg, salt and pepper, and a quarter cup of, um, a quarter cup of grated Parmesan. What about spinach wraps? As long as the spinach wraps are low in carbs, you should be fine. But just because something says it's made with spinach or it's made with cauliflower does not always mean it's keto. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I actually went to Walmart and did a video yesterday. So as you can see here, I've taken so many videos. All right, as you can see here, this is a cauliflower crust pizza. Look at how many carbs, 42 carbs, net carbs per serving and 86 net carbs for the whole pizza. And I'm the type of person who would eat the whole pizza. For example, you could get a Quest pizza that's the same amount of calories, but it's like 21 net carbs for the whole thing. So just because something says it's made with cauliflower does not always mean that it's keto friendly. That's really important to know. Like you see these all the time. They have pasta in the frozen vegetable section at Walmart that's like made with zucchini. And it's like, if it's not zucchini noodles and it's made with zucchini, be very careful. Like check the carbs because I saw one. It says made with zucchini, but I forget what it was. It was like hash browns or something but it was like 12 net carbs per hash brown. And who eats just one hash brown, you know? Oysters, sardines, Cornish pickles are also good on a board. Oh, good ideas. Oysters and sardines are two of the healthiest things you can eat. 
So guys, if you don't have a seafood aversion or like canned seafood aversion, two really good things are oysters and sardines for your health. Super high in omega-3s, oysters have a lot of other benefits too, like they have a lot of minerals. So if you guys can do those uh, without getting a tummy ache or thinking they smell gross, go for it. Speaking of like healthy foods that don't taste amazing, I bought these yesterday at the grocery store. So we're gonna try chicken hearts and I'm gonna see how they taste. But organ meats are so good for you. Any organ meat, like liver specifically, is amazing for you. We're gonna try chicken hearts. Anna's not watching, so. I guess she'll never know. She asked what I was doing, but I hid it behind the mic, so she doesn't know what happened. Sylvia, so you love hearts. Organ meat is rich in iron. Yeah, it's like uh, good for minerals. Wow, a lot of people are saying they're delicious. I've had beef hearts. It's a Peruvian thing. So I've had them from Anna's mom. They were amazing. And we had them at a Peruvian restaurant and they were also good. But yeah, guys, if you grew up eating organ meat, like liver or hearts or whatever, and you're doing keto right now or you're trying to get healthy right now, incorporating that stuff into your diet you don't have to if you don't like that stuff, but if you do enjoy it, incorporating that into your diet will be a game changer for your health. How do you get your teeth so white? I think it's just the lighting. I have a lot of lights on me right now. But I recently started flossing for the first time ever. And let me tell you guys how I did it, all right? So this is a really cool tip that you can create any habit. I kind of did a post about it where... Um, my name is pronounced Eric Des, not Eric, it's Eric. But I kind of did a, that was not Minute Maid, that was zero sugar. Oh no, you just outed me, MM. So the reason I said Anna, let's like hope she doesn't see me is because she hates when I drink out of the bottle. Uh, and I took a sip out of the bottle. So you just told on me because I had to, I read your comment out loud. But um, no, this is the zero sugar one, so it has zero carbs. Now I forget what I was talking about. Can somebody remind me? All right, we're gonna check on the Fridiata. I don't think it's been 15 minutes, but we're gonna see. Ooh, this is looking good. It needs a few more minutes, but wow. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. Okay, we were talking about flossing. All right, so it's just the lighting. That's why they look white. But speaking of teeth, I went probably what? I'm 26. So I went about 25 years of never flossing. Didn't floss. I maybe flossed a few times. Everyone tells you to floss. It's more important than brushing your teeth. I just never did it. And then recently I was listening to a podcast that talked about how it's way more important than even brushing your teeth. And I was like, I feel gross if I don't brush my teeth. And if you're supposed to floss and it doesn't even matter as much to really brush, it's like just more about flossing. Then I was like, which I still brush every day too, but it's more important to floss. So I was like, oh God, I'm not flossing at all. So I was like, how can I create the habit of flossing every day? And you're not gonna do it by being like, all right, I'm just gonna floss my teeth every day. I, the first step, this is the most important step. I did not make myself floss my entire mouth the whole time. So I just said, I'm gonna do one tooth a night. I'm literally just gonna floss one tooth and then I'm done. I did that. 
And the next step that's really important is instead of using the stupid string that's like hard to pull off and you have to wrap it around your finger. And I feel like it feels weird to me when it's wrapped around my finger, like it's cutting off my circular. Like I have sensitive fingers. I don't like them being touched by things like that. It like gives me the ick. It's like biting a fork, but I just don't like string floss. So I bought the little pluck things and I use those and it's so much easier. So I made myself only have to do one tooth per night and I got the convenient way to floss. Yeah, the flossing sticks. So once I started doing that, it was like, all right, I'm already flossing one tooth and I'm not annoyed that I have to like wrap this thing around my finger. So then I just finished it. And some days I don't even do my whole mouth. I'll just do like the back teeth because I don't have to. But the fact that I get up and I make an effort to floss every day is the important part. And now I've been doing it like every day. And I would say 90% of the time I do floss the whole mouth, but some days I'm just not feeling it and I'll like do a few teeth and then be like, all right, I'm done. All right, we only have like three minutes. Hmm. What are ketones? All right, so ketones are the backup source of energy in your body. So we usually use glucose for energy because we usually eat carbs. When you stop eating carbs, your body starts using ketones for energy, which it gets from the fat you consume and the fat that's stored on your body. So if the goal is weight loss and you're doing keto, you want to eat high fat for a few reasons, mostly because it's just good. It ta the food tastes good. It's satiating. It keeps you full all day, especially when paired with high protein, like high fat, good amounts of protein, you'll be full all day. But another thing to think about with fat is if being in ketosis means my body is either going to use consumed fat or stored fat for energy, the, the less consumed fat, so the less of these that I eat, the more of this my body is going to use for energy. So it doesn't mean you should go low fat or even moderate fat. You should still do pretty high fat. But that's why I did a post the other day where I was like, you don't need to eat sticks of butter and blocks of cream cheese. And unless you have no weight to lose and you're just doing keto for like the cognitive benefits and or the long term health benefits, but you're at a stable weight and you just can maintain like eating a block of cream cheese for lunch, which I don't think is a good idea. But whenever you're making food choices, just think about like, what can I eat that will taste good, that doesn't have carbs, that's gonna keep me full until the next meal. That doesn't always involve putting a whole block of cream cheese on whatever you're eating, you know? And the more you can be mindful about that, the more likely your body is gonna tap into the stored fat for energy. All right, I'm gonna get a trivet. We're gonna take out this frittata and we're gonna slice it and eat it. Hmm. Floss one tooth. I guess it's two since it's half of a tooth next to it. That's true. It's like you, I floss between two teeth. I do one flossing motion. Lactose intolerant keto options. If you get like an Asian keto cookbook or like a grilling keto cookbook, you'll probably find a lot of ideas. I'm sure there are dairy free keto cookbooks out there too. What are the main things you keep in your cupboard while you're on keto? I could show you guys. Um, I'll just go in here briefly and tell you like some of the things. So like nut butter, seaweed, I have these monk pack bars. I have uh, perfect keto bars, almond flour, unsweetened cocoa powder, lots of like seasonings and stuff, uh, tuna. We have some carbs from just like when Anna was not on keto with me. We have some collagen. We have some premier protein. We have Truvia sweetener, Rayos, Palmini, and some dog treats. All right, and I'll do a more detailed post about like what's in my kitchen in a few days. Thank you, Pasta King.
Oh my gosh, this looks so good. This looks amazing. Yeah, I added just enough spinach to where there's like a little bit of green, but it's not too crazy. I think we need to take a picture of this. Can you guys see like what's inside here from the angle it's at or does it look weird to you? Oh my God, this picture looks amazing. Okay, that's good. Let's cut into this. I have a spatula. I'm at a cool in the middle before I start serving it. Here we go. Dang, maybe I should have used parchment paper. It's kind of sticking a little. This is strange. Oh, no, it's not. All right, we're good. We in here. Let's go. All right, let's go. Oh, yummy, yummy. Wow, I can't wait until Sophia can eat. She's gonna love this stuff. All right, these pepperonis stuck. If you want it to be no mess at all, just put parchment paper inside of it. Yeah, it's basically like an omelet pizza. Wow. Green chilies would be good, I agree. All right, I had one third of this. Let me grab a pointy spoon. And it's super hot. Before we do the taste test, I need to prepare myself. It just doesn't look as good on the camera, but. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is amazing. This is so good. I think you could scramble the eggs. I think it would work if you scrambled the eggs, right? Do you think it would work if you scrambled the eggs? Yeah, why not? Yeah, right? Like, yeah. why wouldn't or it? Like, part, like, just gently scramble. Yeah. You can't have uh, ricote on keto mini. Yeah, Dora, the eggs are fully cooked. Yeah, it's kind of like a cliche. This is so amazing. I like that ski breakfast pizza. Dora, you're welcome. Let me know what you think. Gosh, this is so freaking good. It just came to me. I was walking Sophia around the neighborhood. 
I was listening to a podcast with David Goggins. Shout out to David Goggins. Totally unrelated, but the thought just entered my mind. Like, what if you did the frittata, but as a pizza? Burn, I was looking for chopped jalapenos in the fridge. Mm. All right, this is amazing. I'm going to get off here, guys. Mm. This is better than the original recipe I posted a few weeks ago. Go make this. Well, it was 350 for 15 minutes. All right. I love you. I believe in you. I'll see you tomorrow.